Welcome to my white worm culturing series. This is the introduction video. Other videos will cover the other topics in greater detail, such as medium and feeding and mites, all that jazz. That allows me to get into them in greater detail, like I said, without making this one super long, boring video that's hard to digest. So check out the other videos. I've cultured white worms for decades. This particular strain you're looking at, I've probably had this one going on close to 15 years at this point. Also, being that I sell white worm cultures, over the years I've probably made hundreds, if not thousands of cultures. If I'm allowed to be an expert on one thing in the world, I'll pick white worms. What you're looking at is a side view of a goldfish bowl. So there's a culture you know, so instead of a hard to see through plastic, this is a glass goldfish bowl. Normally, most videos are, are shooting down. So you'll see this worm, this worm pile on top of the medium. But shooting this way just gives us, a, a, I think, a more interesting look into the culture. My medium also happens to be cocoa fiber, which is very coarse. So once I flip the lights on and start bumping the culture, they will bury themselves into the dirt almost immediately, or cocoa fiber. So again, what you're looking at, side view of a pile of worms around a piece of bread. White worms are very important to me. If I were to keep only one live food culture, it would be white worms. And there's a number of reasons for this. And I say it would be white worms, and I should say, easily would be white worms. I would pick white worms over anything else easily. Why? My cultures live in the garage on a shelf, have for years, never had a problem with them. No considerations. They just sit there on a shelf year after year, enormous harvests. There's very few organisms that I've cultured and I've cultured most uh, of our culture or our live food organisms and I can't say that about hardly any of them. White worms, garage, no problem. They can live in aquarium for weeks so you can really feed your fish weeks at a time using white worms. It may sound odd a worm living in water for an extended period of time but in many they're not semi-aquatic but in many aspects they just love water. It's um, one of their natural habitats is uh, around water, all right? So again, they'll live in, a, in an aquarium for weeks. They are very high in protein, and additionally, you can gut load your worms. So whatever you want to get into your fish, you feed it to your worms. So whether it be medicated food, yeast, greens, like I said, whatever you want to add to your fish's diet, feed it to your worms, and it gets right into your fish's gut. Fish also love white worms. So I've never really seen a fish turn their nose up to a white worm. So when it comes to breeding and conditioning, there's really nothing better than white worms. And I alluded to, to this fact, but they are robust to a wide range of temperatures. There's a lot of misleading information out there on white worms and their temperature uh, requirements. Like I said, they sit in the garage year round. So I've had white worm cultures that have had ice starting to cover the top of them. And in the summertime, I've had temperatures reaching into the 80s. So uh, again, uh, very robust to a wide range of temperatures. What is a white worm? It's a group of closely, excuse me, excuse me here. It's a group of closely related species, which includes grindle worms and red worms. However, in our hobby, pretty much everybody uses the term white worm for this worm specifically, the albidus. So you may see white worm used casually, depending on what circle you are in, but in uh, like culturing for foods, this is usually considered the white worm. 
Where do these things live in nature? Oh, they're actually found around the globe. I mean, they keep finding the white worm in various locations around the, wor the world, especially the, this one, the albedus, right? On the North American continent here, they range from Canada to Virginia. And like I said, you can find them in many other parts of the world. And its natural habitats are just wet, organic rich environments. They really love moisture, especially lakes and seas and oceans. One of their primary habitats, this is an interesting fact about them, is they, they uh, excel in the marine littoral um, habitat, which is the land where the water is impacting it, right? So the beach and beyond, I don't know what all the names of these things are called, but, um, and you'll find them in, like I said, just organic piles. So an algae pile or a seaweed pile, that's where you would find, find them primarily in the wild, just organic rich areas. And in human areas, you'll find them around our compost piles. As far as care, it's one of the easiest. Like I said, if, if I were to pick one organism, it would be white worms. One of those just being how easy they are to care for. Like I said, I've kept them in my garage for years without any considerations. They just sit on a shelf and I've never had a problem. And there's always something to harvest out of them. All right, so let's wrap this up. You're looking at a goldfish bowl. This is uh, the demonstration culture I'll be using in my videos, all right? So we'll have some interesting looks and I'll, I'll pass on some of the things I've learned over the years, all right? So check out those other videos. Have a good one.